Now let's take the homogeneous solution and the particular solution we've generated for these two equations and apply some initial condition. Let's use the initial condition y of 0 equals minus 2 for both problems. Now recall the problems. dy dt is minus 3y plus t squared minus 1 and dy dt is 2y plus 3 sine 4t. And recall the homogeneous solutions, the non-zero homogeneous solution we generated for each and the particular solution to the original non-homogeneous problem that we generated for each. So in the first problem, the general solution is any multiple of the homogeneous solution, the non-zero homogeneous solution, plus the one particular solution. And if I substitute 0 in for t, I'm supposed to get y of 0 is minus 2. That gives me k times 1 plus 0 minus 0 minus 7 27. In other words, negative 2 is k minus 7 27. And negative 2 is negative 54 27. So if I add 7 27 to both sides, k is minus 47 27. And the specific solution is negative 47 27 e to the minus 3t plus 1 third t squared minus 2 ninths t minus 7 27 It's a little bit messy with the fractions there, but essentially it's a decaying exponential plus a parabola. In the second problem, the general solution is any multiple of the non-zero homogeneous solution plus the particular solution that we generated. So if I put in 0 for t, again I get k e to the 0 minus 3 fifths cosine of 0 minus 3 tenths sine of 0. That gives me negative 2. y of 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 is equal to k minus 3 fifths. And negative 2 is negative 10 fifths. So if I add 3 fifths to both sides, k is negative 7 fifths. That gives me a solution of negative 7 fifths e to the 2t minus 3 fifths cosine 4t minus 3 tenths sine 4t. These are solutions to these initial value problems, and these initial value problems satisfy the conditions of the existence uniqueness theorems. So these solutions are the one and only one solution to each of these problems. Next, let's look at the qualitative properties in a graph.